Do you want to switch your cat to a healthier diet? Commercial kibble and canned food can cause various health issues to your cat that are often brushed off as just something that cats deal with, such as being overweight and excessive shedding and skin problems. Cats often overeat when fed an improper diet because they're trying to make up for nutritional deficiencies. They also require omega-3s in their diet, which keep their skin and coat healthy, which is often lacking in commercial foods. This must come from animal sources as cats have a limited ability to make these nutrients from carb-based commercial foods. If you're thinking about transitioning your cat to raw, this guide will hopefully help you switch your cat from a dehydrating dry food to a moisture-dense, vitamin-packed, and protein-rich diet. Cats are true obligate carnivores, which means animal tissue and flesh are biologically essential for their survival. Because of this, cats will never thrive on kibble and tend to develop issues like obesity, urinary tract infections, and diabetes that seem to correlate with these biologically inappropriate ingredients kibble contains. Kibble is filled with starch and other carbohydrates that unfortunately must be included for it to be manufactured and extruded. While you may see the first ingredient on the bag being an animal protein, odds are the next five are plant-based protein sources. Above all else, kibble is extremely low in moisture. Because cats are obligate carnivores, their bodies operate on the notion that it will receive most moisture from raw meat. And this is why they don't often have the drive to drink. Cat urine is already very concentrated and dehydration only concentrates it more. This is one reason kibble-fed cats will get lower urinary tract infections. Canned food is definitely better than dry as far as the ingredients and moisture content goes, but the meat-based ingredients are usually subpar and it's filled with synthetic vitamins. Even with all of this being said, cats can be picky and older cats tend to take a little more time to transition to a raw diet as opposed to kittens, young cats, and dogs. Kibble is known to be addictive and it can definitely be a process switching them to a different taste and texture. Kittens take no time at all to transition. When I brought Tangy home at 14 weeks, he was extremely eager to try out raw. I did have to cut the chunks into smaller pieces and he had some trouble chewing on the bone at first, but it was very simple to make it easier for him. If you have kitchen shears, they work great to cut small bone into smaller chunks. Bone end cuts that are great for kittens are chicken wing tips, chicken toes, quail parts, rabbit ribs, and small Cornish hen parts. Kittens need to eat around 10% of their body weight daily, but it's often suggested to offer them as much as they want while they're growing. This should be split up between four to six feedings a day. Kittens also need a balanced diet daily as they can't regulate nutrients like adults can. I will link my video on balancing at the end of this video. If you have a kitten, offer one animal protein, but a balance between raw meaty bone, muscle meats, and organ from that animal. Over time, you can start to incorporate other animal proteins. I will go over how much of each cut to feed later in the video. Now let's move on to adult cats. The stages many raw feeders use when transitioning their cat is dry to canned, then canned to raw. If your cat is picky, you can add in an in-between step of canned to ground raw so they still have that canned food texture, then ground raw to chunks and bone. If you're just feeding a pre-made balanced raw grind, that's fine, but it's beneficial to add in a raw meaty bone once a week or so so they can exercise their jaw and clean their teeth as they chew. Patience is key when transitioning your cat. Even if you get frustrated, keep pursuing it. If you free feed your cat only dry, the first step is to stop free feeding. Even just by doing this, your cat can cut some weight. Only offer food two to three times a day so your cat starts to associate you with food as well as being hungry and more eager to try and eat something new. Once you get feeding time set, start offering canned food, preferably a high quality, grain-free, meat-based wet food. If they're refusing it, you may need to try a few other brands, even if it's lower quality, then work your way up. If they refuse the wet and only eat the dry, try mixing the wet into the dry food. Even if they're picking the kibble out, they're still getting a taste of the wet. When you think your cat is conditioned enough to eat the wet food, try only offering the wet food. You may see them turn their nose up at it and wait for the dry food. Pick it up and put it in the fridge and offer it to them a few hours later. If your cat is diabetic or has a health issue that requires them to eat often, don't keep food from them for too long. But healthy cats can go upwards of 12 hours without food, even 24 in most cases. If tough love isn't cutting it and your cat is going on a hunger strike, try topping the wet food with a meat-based baby food, freeze-dried treats, or bonito flakes. Sometimes it even takes putting the wet food on your finger and rubbing it on their gums or a little on their nose so they can lick it off. Be sure that this doesn't stress your cat out and make them associate the wet food with a negative situation though. No matter how little your cat progresses, don't give up. Remember, this can take months if your cat is super picky. Once your kitty is eating canned, let them get used to this way of feeding for a few weeks. 
Transitioning is a slow process with a picky cat, so give them time to get used to the change. After a few weeks or so of eating canned, try adding in a little bit of raw to your cat's wet food. This can be a pre-made grind or small chunks of white meat like chicken, turkey, quail, rabbit, or duck. If they eat around it, try mixing a teaspoon of raw throughout their wet. Odds are they will probably get a little taste of it and also start getting used to the scent. If this seems to work, slowly continue to add more and slightly bigger chunks. If they do well and don't have an allergic reaction to a protein, you can slowly start incorporating other proteins. Slowly decrease the wet while increasing the raw. Again, go slow and don't get frustrated even if it takes a while. Once they're fully eating raw muscle meats, you need to start adding in organ and bone. The bone will make their stool a lot more firm. They may take to organ meats quicker than raw meaty bone cuts because they haven't really had to use their jaw muscles to chew and crunch before. Try cutting up or even grinding small bone in pieces like chicken wing tips and chicken necks. Offer these when they're the most hungry and they're most likely to try it. If they aren't taking to it, it's best to supplement calcium until they do. My favorite way to do this is taking farm fresh eggshells, air drying them or baking them for a few minutes at 300 degrees, then blending them into a powder. Store-bought eggshells tend to be sprayed with chemicals and shouldn't be fed unless you wash them thoroughly. Eggshells are about 90 to 97% calcium carbonate and the best way to incorporate calcium naturally if they aren't eating bone. The general dosage is half teaspoon per one pound of food. Are you wondering how much to feed your cat? Raw feeders have formulated specific ratios of bone, organ, and muscle meats that best mimic the small whole prey that they would usually hunt and consume in the wild. These ratios are 83 to 85% muscle meat, with 10 to 15% of this being heart, 7 to 10% raw meaty bone, and 5 to 10% organ meat, with half of this being liver. How much of this to feed daily is dependent on your cat's age, body weight, and activity level. For example, Tangy is a two-year-old, 10-pound cat that is moderately active, so I feed him around 2.5% of his body weight daily. 2.5% of 10 pounds is 0.25 pounds. Let's make this easier and convert it to ounces. To do this, you just multiply 0.25 times 16, and that equals four. So Tangy needs around four ounces of food daily. Now I can figure out how much muscle meat, bone, and organ he needs. 0.85 times 4 equals 3.4, so Tangy needs around 3.4 ounces of muscle meat daily. Remember, you need to include heart in this. Cats cannot produce their own taurine, and without it, they can develop health ailments like cardiomyopathy and central retinal degeneration. Taurine is found in hard-working muscle meats, so heart is a great source of taurine. 0.7 times 4 is 0.28 or 0.3, so Tangy needs around 0.3 ounces of bone. You also have to remember to count the muscle meat on the bone into the muscle meat percentage. I will put a link to common bone cuts and their bone to meat percentage in the description, but for example, chicken necks are about 36% bone and the rest is muscle meat. Then 0.5 times 4, which equals 0.2. So Tangy needs around 0.2 ounces of liver and 0.2 ounces of other secreting organ. Examples of secreting organs are kidney, thymus, pancreas, brain, spleen, and testicle. If Tangy was not eating bone and I had to supplement with eggshell powder, the ratios would change to 90% muscle meat, 10% organ, and he would get around 1 8 teaspoon of eggshell powder. These ratios vary depending on how much bone and organ your cat does best on. The best way to figure this out is to monitor their stool. If it's loose, try upping the bone and decreasing the organ percentage. If it's firm and crumbly, try decreasing the bone and increasing the organ meat. Once your kitty is eating muscle meat, raw meaty bone, liver, and other secreting organ, you need to start balancing the diet. There are essential nutrients that cats get from eating whole prey, but they're lacking in homemade raw diets. Thankfully, there are fresh foods you can add to balance it. To learn more, check out this video.